good in anything? No. Exactly. So. I'm here to make your job easy. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling, by the way. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is welcome to YouTube, people. Um, <laughs> what's going on, everybody? So we are back with some YouTube videos. Took a nice little hiatus, uh, you know, decided to get cancer, so that was cool. And luckily, that is all squared away. We are good. And we are going to do a little Q&A today. Put it out on uh, social media that wanted to kind of update you on what's going on in my life, where I'm at, what's to come. And we're just going to kind of roll into actually the intro a little bit. Um, somebody asked, how are you recovering from the injury and cancer diagnosis? So honestly, things are going really well. So if you're just kind of tuning in, you see the previous video that I was diagnosed with testicular cancer about two months ago, two and a half months ago at this point. Um, and obviously terrifying, totally sucked, not really exciting to deal with that, especially being 29 years old, super healthy and no family history of it. So really wasn't expecting to get that diagnosis. Went in, had the surgery. So we removed my right testicle, everything that comes along with it. And fortunately, when the testing came back after the sample was sent out, came back as a stage one seminoma, which is pretty much the best of the worst case scenarios we could have asked for in terms of testicular cancer. So it had not metastasized to anything else, any other structures, it was localized just to the right testicle. And now I am fortunate enough where I took about six weeks out of the gym uh, in terms of heavy lifting. I just started my prep back uh, this past week and I can start training fully now. So pretty much the outlook after this is I have to do what's called active monitoring. So I will be doing a regular schedule of blood work and CT scans for the next five years pretty much to make sure nothing new pops up and just to really stay on top of everything and make sure that I stay healthy and stay in remission. And then after that five years, I can be considered cancer free. So that's what we're gonna be going for. Other than that, the tricep is coming along, definitely took a little bit of a hit uh, from taking so much time out of the gym, but all in all, it's actually feeling pretty good. I'm excited working with a new coach, Terry Rady, in my prep for the Rogue Invitational and feeling really good about everything. So this week, hit log in the low 300 pound range, so not too bad, started doing some heavier log cleans, the pressing's coming along, the split jerk is coming back nice and slow, but it will happen, just gotta work on that overhead stabilization, but I guess long story short, short um, I feel pretty good. I'm excited, I'm optimistic, I'm motivated, which is really awesome. I'm just genuinely excited to be competing again because I've missed it so much. Kind of rolls into the next question is what's my next event? What am I training for? So I just kind of alluded to a little bit. Um, I am getting ready for the inaugural Rogue Invitational Strongman competition that is happening Halloween weekend in Austin, Texas. Really, really honored to, be a, to have been invited to this competition as only 10 athletes were invited. There was no qualification system. It was literally just invite only. So it is an absolutely stacked lineup. So it's myself, both Stoltmans, Brian Shaw, Martins, Matush, Kiliskovsky, Oleski Novikov, JF Caron, Jerry Pritchett, and Mikhail Shivlikov. So <laughs> absolutely monstrous lineup. And like I said, I am so honored to be considered one of those 10 athletes to be going to this competition. The first year that the competition is happening, which is fantastic, Rogue putting up a ton of prize money. I'm not gonna say the exact number, but I will say that it is the biggest prize pot we have seen in Strongman before with the biggest first prize payout ever. So really, really exciting on that, uh, on that aspect of it. And I do feel really good. We should be hopefully getting the events for that competition in the next few weeks. Now that you know Rogue was obviously just a little bit busy just over the last couple of weeks with the CrossFit games going on, and now that that's over, they're going to be switching their focus to the Rogue Invitational. So we should be finding those events out in a little bit. In a little bit. And once we do get those, I'll bring them to you. Next question. Uh, how do you compensate for lack of height in certain events? So I get asked this a lot. And for me, I've had to turn my strengths from different events and be able to utilize them in other events that normal taller athletes wouldn't have to. So example for the Atlas Stones. When we have Atlas Stones to a platform then descending height, the first Atlas Stone height is typically about 65 inches, with on, which on me is about eyebrow height, right? With a stone going that high, all these athletes right now are able to one motion stones up to that platform. And being shorter, I just simply can't do it uh, because it's pretty much impossible. 
especially with a 275 or 300 pound Atlas stone. I can one motion those stones, but to a height like that, it really, it doesn't end up saving me any time. So what I essentially have to do and what I, you know, kind of advise you guys to do out there as well when you're on the shorter side, loading to a higher platform, get that stone to the chest and actually you'll have to pretty much press it up onto the platform. That's why I've used my, my strength in pressing, translated that into Atlas stones to be able to make myself efficient in that movement. In terms of other events like a keg toss or a throwing event, obviously don't look at me for advice because I'm not that great. But what should be happening is working more on explosive technique, trying to get more power through the hips, triple extension, almost like an Olympic style training, in order to really just get that triple extension and explosive power moving upward to get the, the implement over the bar. Now that being said, there's just an anatomical deficit that you're gonna be at, right? Competing against guys that are six foot five and up versus me that's five foot 10. Those athletes, when you take into account their wingspan, are almost a foot closer to the, to the bar when releasing an implement overhead, which means us shorter athletes have to work that much harder and throw it that much further to get it over the bar. So trying to just be really efficient in those movements, powerful through the hips and through triple extension is gonna help you do that. Other than that, what I really did was I became a student of the sport of strongman. So I looked at the techniques that were working for other athletes and tried to dissect it a little bit, see what I could pick from each athlete that was really successful at that movement and utilize it in my own training. And doing that, I was able to essentially come up with a little bit different techniques and make things work for me and able to be able and able to compete at this level. Why was that so hard to say? Anywho, uh, if asked, would you perform feats of strength at a pride event? I absolutely would, with a caveat. So I will say like as a uh, professional strongman, injury prevention is something that I have to be cognizant of always. And I have been asked multiple times to perform feats of strength at different events. And I hope this doesn't come across as selfish, but I'm not willing to put my body on the line in that way unless there is some kind of return. And I don't mean that as far as me getting paid, but I would want to, you know, specifically at a pride event, I would want to be able to have, to raise some money for a charity at least, right? So I, want, I would want to be doing it for a good cause, not to just show up and lift a barbell to put on a show. Uh, personally, I think that is kind of pointless and the risk and reward really isn't there, right? So me doing a feat of strength just to do something isn't really in my best interest as an athlete right now when I have competitions that are paying out good money that I need to be healthy for and ready for. But if there was the option of being able to donate to charity with the funds that were raised, absolutely something I would do. Next question, opinions on more weight classes for strongmen and how would it work? So I like this question because I think a lot of people look at strongman and they automatically just assume that is just world's strongest man athletes. And there's nothing other than behemoths lifting. In reality, there are multiple weight classes of lower weight divisions in the sport. And I think a great resource for this is starting strongman. Their tagline is strongman is for everyone, which is absolutely the truth. So in the, on the men's side, the weight classes we have, we have a lightweight division, which is 175 pounds and under. We have middle weights, which is 230, 175 to 231, then heavyweights or anything above 231. Now within those, here in the US at least, we do have subcategories within there, right? So we have the 175 or all U90 kilo uh, for all you other outside of the US people. Um, that then within that middleweight division, which is 175 pounds to 231, so 80 kilos to 105, we have a 90 kilo class, which is right around 200 pounds. And then heavyweight, it really is pretty much just 231 and up. Uh, sometimes at nationals, what we've seen is we've seen subcategories. So we'll see a 265 to 231 subcategory, the heavyweights, uh, 308 to 265, and then a super heavyweight. So there is a lot of variability within weight classes and at bigger competitions. I think what we're seeing now is we're pretty much just seeing the, the big three. So that 175 and under, 175 to 231, 231 and up. Um, but that being said, there is always opportunity for you to compete regardless of your weight. On the women's side, we see the same thing. So we have a 140 and below for the lightweights, 140 to 180 for the middleweights, 180 and up is the heavyweights. So I think 
when people have this idea of what strongman is, that it is only these massive athletes competing, when you dive into it a little bit deeper, you realize at the local level for these competitions, we have multiple weight classes, people of all ages, and they're coming together to compete, and we're here to celebrate strength regardless of how big you are, because at the end of the day, seeing somebody lift something heavy, whether it be a personal best or they're just competing, is honestly really, really cool. And the last question we're gonna go is, where's the YouTube videos? Wednesdays aren't the same anymore. Well, funny you should ask. We're doing one right now. Um, they are gonna be coming back on a regular basis. As I said before, with the health issues that I was dealing with uh, pretty recently, this wasn't a priority for me. My priority was to recover, get healthy, and make sure nothing more serious was going on. And now that we are on the other side of the surgery, we have the results from the cancer diagnosis, we are going to be coming back at you full steam ahead. My man, Alan, behind the camera is going to be running, doing some magic to make sure that we are bringing a one, at least one video every single week to you, whether it's training, lifestyle, Q and A, pretty much whatever's going on in life to keep you all updated. I have missed all of you. I miss doing all this stuff. I'm so happy to be doing it again. Uh, I really appreciate all the support and the love that I felt during this time. It really was, it shook things up to say the least and I don't think any of us were expecting it, but to see my fans and everybody showing so much support and love for me really did help me power through everything that I was going through. And it really is so much fun to be on the other side of that, focusing on competing again, getting back to doing what I love and bringing you guys all the content that you want to see because hey, I'm pretty. Uh, other than that, as always, check out all of my sponsors down below in the description, discount codes with everybody. And until next time, power through.